Hey YouTube people, Kevin here. Today we're going to be analyzing the verse groove to Gojira's Born in Winter, a song I covered a few weeks ago and I just got floods of comments requesting a lesson video on the groove, which to be honest is so incredibly creative and unique and challenging uh, that I think an in-depth analysis will, will definitely help you figure this out. To start, this groove is entirely in 4-4 um, and has a, a few central uh, bass drum patterns. There are three. We'll name them A, B, and C. With pattern A, you have bass drum hits on the, the one, the two, and the two and a half. Um, and of course, there are just hi hat hits on one, two, three, four. There's the primary snare hit on the three. And for now, we're just going to be ignoring uh, the ghost note pattern. We'll get to that later. Um, so, pattern A uh, goes like this. Pattern B, you're going to take the second bass drum hit and shift it from the two to the one and a half. So now pattern B becomes... Pattern C, you just get rid of the second bass drum hit altogether. So now you just have bass drum hits on the one and the two and a half. So you have... Putting all that together, let's just do it in order of A, B, C. It should sound like this. difficulty really comes from um, how he plays those beats um, in combination with each other. So sometimes he'll go A, B, C, and then he'll go B, A, C. I think later in the video I'll delve more into the order in which he plays them, but for now I would say just generally think as, as your core, core understanding of the song, he will generally play A, B, C, B, A, C. And that's kind of how he varies it. So. C is always the third beat he plays, and then the A and the B vary. Okay, now let's jump into that uh, ghost note pattern. The ghost note pattern, let me just play what it should generally sound like. For beats A and C, I will typically make the last two ghost notes into just a doublet with my left hand. So it'll sound like... Pattern B, I will actually do two doublets um, instead of messing around with the right and the left. So pattern B is actually going to sound like... You are going to hear slight variations of that ghost note pattern. He will add in different accents. Sometimes the accents signal when you should be repeating certain patterns. I would definitely advise using that. Pay attention to the accents because generally what's going to happen is he will use like uh, a ghost note accent on like the, the 0 0.5 or the 4.5 or however you want to notate it um, and then that'll signal, oh, I should be playing pattern A two times in a row or three times in a row. Putting A, B, and C together with the ghost note pattern, it should sound like this. The difficulty, in my opinion, comes from how he varies the groove from section to section. So there are approximately six major sections uh, to this verse groove, and all of them are very, very different in how he orders um, the patterns. In section one, he starts off by playing A, B, C, okay, and then B, A, C, and then I think he plays B, A, C again. I'm not going to walk you through every single line of the groove but he does not repeat any of those patterns in a row. You know, it's always B, A, C, A, B, C. So that's section one. And then you can differentiate these sections um, by the fact that he plays some fill where you hit the... So he'll, he'll play like... So that little left, right on the cymbals is how you know you're transitioning into a new section. Now, when you transition into section two, you will hit some repeating patterns. This is signaled by the fact that he will do an accent on, like I said, the four and a half. Um, and then he plays pattern A three times in a row. Uh, then he plays pattern B, and then he'll play pattern A two times in a row, and then he'll transition into section three. So it kind of sounds like... That's where section two is going to demonstrate 
that uh, that repeating pattern concept. Okay, so three A's in a row, a B, and then two A's to finish off section two. Now going into section three, it starts off pretty normal with really not too many repeats, um, and then you actually are going to repeat pattern B twice, followed by, I think, yeah, three, three pattern A's, uh, a pattern C, and then back to A, and then transition into section four. If you're confused, go through my video and try to understand exactly what I mean when I say play three A's in a row or play two B's in a row. It makes a lot more sense when you watch the actual drum video or just listen along with the original track. In section four, it actually eases up a little bit. And, and Mario really only plays B, C. So it's just B, C repeating like that. Section five is going to introduce a different bass drum pattern. Now this pattern is a slight variation of pattern B. Uh, the only difference is, is that you're gonna add a doublet hit onto um, your one. Call that pattern D and just keep in mind it has that extra doublet on the hi-hat on the one. Section 5 generally actually features an AD alternating pattern. The difficulty comes in the fact that now you are loosening the hi-hat during pattern A um, when you hit the snare. So you're kind of playing section 5 is probably the most technically challenging part of the groove. After section 5, uh, you're going to transition into section 6, which itself is mostly just a transition to the chorus. There is a bit of a build-up. It's the, the part that goes like... Uh, just make sure you're ac accenting the, the right, left, right. At which point you go into the chorus, which maybe that will be subject of a future lesson, uh, but for now, I think I'm just gonna hold off at the end of the verse. Um, again, this is not meant to be a complete tutorial in the sense that you can watch this video and you know how to play it. Um, this is really just meant to give you some pointers and some advice and so the general concept of the groove, but there's just too much memorizing and too many variations for me to really show you exactly note for note what this groove is. So my advice would be to practice, to listen to the song as much as you possibly can, maybe give my drum cover a few watches and shares, uh, shameless plug right there. This is a challenging groove, but I would say it's very rewarding. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will be trying to help you all learn this groove because it is awesome. I hope this video was helpful. It took me probably a couple months to get this groove down perfectly. So don't feel bad if it's if you're struggling with it. It just takes time. Mm -hmm.